Why does an inventor invent? Well, you invent to solve problems. But the problem is that there are other things that arise from it, other problems, unforeseen consequences. So it's a never-ending cycle. There's also consequences. For instance, the Chinese invented gunpowder really to make noise for the gods. But within a short time, they thought of it as powering arrows. Also, the Wright brothers, they flew a Kitty Hawk so people can fly. Within less than 15 years, it was used to bomb people on a war. And now, by the way, the first flight that they did was the distance from one tip of a 747 to the other. That's what their first flight was. Now we have B-2 bombers, we have flights, we have everything. Ben Franklin tried to understand electricity. He was one of many in the 18th and 19th century. Well, that has resulted in satellites, both positive and negative. Now, I was traveling from Minnesota, St. Paul, to Washington on a flight in July of 1969. So I was sitting next to an engineer from IBM. And like engineers, we start to talk about what we do. And he says to me, I'm having a problem. I'm in a project called Car Track. Now, some of you who are old enough will remember the large barcodes on the side of a railroad car. And it wasn't working. So I had been at the Bell Labs, and I took out my little notebook, and I said, well, I knew that in the Second World War, there was something called friend to foe. An airplane would send a signal, and if it bounced back the wrong way, it was a foe. If it didn't, it was a friend. But then I added a memory. Now, this device had no power. It uses the power of the radio beam. And I called it initially an encoder and started a company. In um, May of that, uh, 1970, we filed for a patent. And in January of 1973, we were awarded it. Meantime, we built it. And in 1971, we went up to New York to the Port Authority. It was about that big. You know, it was a prototype. And we put it on the car in GW Bri George Washington Bridge. And we drove it through back and forth and showed them how you can subtract and add tolls. We did this also in San Francisco. And lo and behold, they said, nobody will ever put that box on their window of their car. <laughs> I said, we can reduce it to a chip. Then. They said, well, what happens if somebody drives through and doesn't have one? I said, simple. You take a picture of their license plate and you send them a ticket. I said, oh, that'd be a violation of their constitutional rights. Well, lo and behold, about 15 years later, I'm driving to New York. My easy pass wasn't working. Who gets the ticket? Me. <laughs> However, <laughs> However in 73, the Port Authorities decided, well, let's see if we can get somebody to make this for us. Well, and anyway, they did it, and we went on. You always go on. You never stay still. Well, now it has many, many uses. And they're as tiny as that and tinier for taking care of people, student cards for opening doors here at GW. I have one. All I have to do is touch the door of my car and it op and opens with keeping the RFID in my pocket. Radio frequency identification tag. You see it on packages. It's used for inventory control. And many, many things. There are more things than I even envisioned in uh, 1969 and 70, which is on that first sheet for my business plan. 
and they're getting tiny. It's smaller than a human blood cell. This will change everything you know about computers. It is so small that you need an electron microscope to see it. This is a game changer. It will do many things that no one has anticipated. We are looking at things such as you could put it in dirt and it'll tell you what's happening. Or you could put it on the shell of an airplane and it'll tell you when it's failing. Billions of these things. So, and there are unforeseen consequences what we don't necessarily know. It will change the way computers are. We can turn the walls, the cloth you're wearing, everything into a computer by spreading it and, and having them all communicate. This will change computing. And I'm not just saying it because I'm the inventor. I'm a scientist, okay? Nano RFIDs are a seed changer in everything we do. Distributive computing the, makes the Internet of Things possible. Now, we have to, as the inventor and producers of these things, know that there are going to be unforeseen consequences that we can't figure out. But we have to try in our best to keep it from being misused or used for things that we may not want. I invent for two things. It's a passion, and it's also a way to try to solve a problem to help society. But you never know, you may be opening Pandora's box. Thank you.